let's get started from the topic where we ended in the previous class. In the last class, we were discussing about AC machines fundamentals and we were discussing on induced voltage in a simple moving conductor if it is placed under a magnetic field. Suppose we are placing a wire under a magnetic field. So let us draw a magnet here. This is a magnet. And let's consider this side as not pole. So we'll have another pole here that is south pole. And the field lines will come from north to south. So the direction of these field lines will be north to south. And we will have infinite number of field lines from north to south. Let us place a conductor under this magnetic field. So we are placing a conductor under this magnetic field. Now if this wire is static, that means if the wire is not moving with respect to this magnetic field, nothing will happen to this wire. That means no voltage will be induced on this wire. However, if we start moving this wire in any direction, there will be some induced voltage as we came to know from our previous lecture. Now we need to know what is the value and the polarity of that induced voltage. How can we get this? In order to know that, let's take a case. Suppose this wire is moving in a direction perpendicular to this magnetic field that means let's consider this wire is moving in this direction and the angle difference between this direction and this magnetic field is 90 degree let's consider it and the velocity of this wire is v we are taking v as vector well the picture will be more clear if we take the top view considering this surface as our bottom view so let's redraw this figure here. We have a surface, suppose this paper surface is this surface. So we have magnetic field. We have magnetic field that is coming out of this paper. So it's coming out. It's coming out and we have this type of magnetic field that is coming out from this paper. That means at the bottom of the paper we have the north side and if we consider on the top of this paper we have south side and fields are coming from north to south so we are taking the top view top view considering this surface as our bottom view so we have magnetic field suppose on a big surface and we are placing our conductor here and this conductor is moving in this direction that is V that we plotted here. If you see from this side, then it will appear that it's moving from left to right. And this direction is the perpendicular direction with respect to this magnetic field lines. Let's consider the value of magnetic field density is B, which is coming out of this paper and which is also vector. That means it's moving from the paper towards you it's popping up from the paper and this conductor is moving with a velocity v and let's consider the length of this conductor is l which is a scalar parameter now if we consider this side as a and this side is b what will be the induced voltage between this a and b point if the conductor moves from left to right with a velocity v under a magnetic field having a value B and the conductor length is L. So the E induced will be it's a vector parameter V vector cross V vector multiplied with length L. Now the magnitude of this E induced will be V magnitude dot b magnitude into sine theta into l what is theta theta is the angle difference between v and b we have v in this direction and b 
90 degree apart from this v direction so we can say the value of b theta is 90 degree so we can write v dot b magnitude into sine 90 degree into length which will return us v b l so the induced voltage the magnitude of the induced voltage is v b l that means magnitude of velocity, magnitude of magnetic field, and the value of wire length. Here we need to understand that we are giving velocity. That means in order to get some velocity, you need to apply some force. That means we are giving force and we are getting induced voltage. That means from mechanical force to electrical power or electrical parameter we are getting so if we get electrical output from mechanical input that action is named as generator actions this is generator action generator and if we move this wire with a velocity v in a certain direction the ma magnitude of e induced that means voltage induced will be vbl this is a governing equation now the question is what is the polarity of this induced voltage in order to get that you need to apply Fleming's right hand rule as it is generator action you must remember for generator action we need to use Fleming's right hand rule for motor action we need to use Fleming's left hand rule we'll come to that point later on but for the time being let's focus on generator action according to the Fleming's right hand rule for example thumb is represented by the direction of the motion of the wire index finger represents the direction of the magnetic field current direction will be represented by this middle finger if we know any two of the directions then third direction can be found out by placing the fingers in this way having 90 degree angle difference this figure is taken from wikipedia and the figure uh, that was shown in the previous lecture was also taken from wikipedia now if we compare our this direction that means direction of motion in this direction and the direction of the magnetic field from the north to south which is represented by index finger it's very easy to figure out what is the direction of current I want all of you to check this using your right hand. If we apply this rule, we'll find that the current is moving in the downward direction. You can check it out. We'll get the current is moving in the downward direction for both the cases. Because these two cases are actually the same. We are having two different views. Remember, the current will flow if the circuit is filled. We are considering the circuit is filled. So here some voltage will be induced and that will act as voltage source and for which the current will be flowing in this direction what does that mean this is actually we will have a equivalent circuit like this we have positive polarity here negative polarity here and this point is named as a and another point is named as b which is similar to this wire connection as it's moving so it's acting like a voltage source if we want to put the polarity of this wire so b will have positive value and a will have negative value i want all of you to have very good idea on these things because this is the very very basic concept of our generator so whenever we will discuss generator we'll consider this motion of the wire for producing voltage and current across the load and through the load respectively now let's see what happens for the opposite case that means we'll apply some voltage on a single wire which is placed on a magnetic field lines we have a magnet and it's not full we have another magnet it's south pole and we have a wire and we are applying voltage here with this polarity let us consider this portion of the wire 
is placed under the magnetic field and the field lines are coming out from north to south so these are this will be the direction of the field line and we have infinite number of field lines now if we draw the top view considering this surface as our bottom so the thing will look like we have magnetic field that is popping out from the paper infinite number of magnetic field that is coming out from the paper so i'm not drawing all the magnetic fields here but we have here like this infinite amount in this direction also we have infinite amount of magnetic field and we are placing our wire here to here and this wire is supplied from an external source that is positive here negative here and we are giving this supply so the current is moving in this direction in this direction if this is the case then this wire will experience a force now what is the direction of that force and what is the magnitude of that force the magnitude of the force can be figured out f equal to b magnitude of b i that means value of current into l sine theta what is theta theta is the angle difference between this current flowing and the direction of the magnetic field and here we can see this angle difference between them is 90 degrees so we can say f equal to b i l for this case now what is l l is the length of this wire now what will be the direction of the force here you need to remember that we are applying some electrical uh, supply that means electrical voltage and which is eventually giving electrical current through this wire and we are getting force output that means force in any particular direction so from electrical input we are getting some mechanical output and due to this reason this action is called motor action motor action if we provide electrical supply and if we get mechanical output then it is called motor action now what will be the direction of the force due to this electrical supply in order to know that we need to apply Fleming's left hand rule so remember for generator action that we gave here we need to apply Fleming's right hand rule and for motor action we need to apply Fleming's left hand rule let's see another figure taken from wikipedia that describes this motor action it's called Fleming's left hand rule this is Fleming's right hand rule right hand rule which describes the generator action and this is left hand rule and it, this describes the motor action similarly we can denote the thrust or motion direction using this thumb this index finger represents the direction of field and this middle finger represents the direction of current if we know any of the two direction then other third direction can be figured out using this left hand rule now if we apply this the direction of this field is coming outward and the direction of the current is going in this direction the field direction will be denoted by this index finger then we'll be able to figure out the direction of the force hence if we apply this left hand rule will get the direction of the force is in this direction so this is force direction i hope this concept is clear the generator action and the motor action flaming's right hand rule and left hand rule and how the voltage is induced in a simple moving conductor when it is placed under a magnetic field and how can you get force from a single conductor from a current carrying conductor which is placed under a magnetic field we'll continue in the next class from here